ora koutou, haere mai, and welcome along to a special World Menopause Day edition of Showy Ovaries, which is a podcast where I, consistently curious Penny Ashton, learn all I can about, you guessed it, menopause, before I am tossed headlong into its hot, flashing embrace. And what better guest to revisit than my third ever Showy Ovaries guest, and the very one who told me that there was even a World Menopause Day at all. Incredibly, we chatted on October 13th, 2021. And as her fun menopause fact, she said, it's World Menopause Day in five days, which I had no idea about. So I rattled my dags and launched the podcast on that day. And since then, Tusiata has messaged me a few times saying that listening to the subsequent podcasts influenced her views on her own menopause and maybe her epilepsy, a diagnosis that we share. So she has taken action and we decided it would be awesome to chat again to find out how it's all going. So a brief intro again. There's a much longer one in her about her immense fabulousness to be found in episode three, season one of Showy Ovaries. But Tusiata Avia is a national poetry treasure. Of Samoan descent, her work Wild Dogs Under My Skirt, which started as a solo show, has evolved into a group piece that has had great acclaim. She's written numerous books of poetry, is a powerhouse performer, and has been an excellent judge for both Poetry Idol and the WOMAD Poetry Slam. She's won numerous awards, including the Ockham Award for Poetry in 2021. She's also had a lot of bodily struggles, which she was so open and honest about in talking with me last year. So let's again welcome back to Showy Ovaries, No Mai, Hoki Mai, and Maliu Mai, Ms. Tusiata Avia. Hello. Talo lava Pini. Hello. Nice really, really nice to be here. Actually. I know. I love this whole thing. Like when we were talking about revisiting you, and then I realized that we were coming upon the very day that you told me it existed in the first place. I just love it was five days before World Menopause Day, and I managed to get my shit together and launch the whole thing on that day. Thanks to you. Well, thank you. I don't even know how I knew that, but obviously. Because I asked you for a fun menopause fact. And it's funny. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. And in the first season, there were quite a few, but everyone's run out of them now because we've had so many fun Mm -hmm. menopause facts. But that was an excellent one. And apparently it's World Menopause Month. And it's been amazing. In that last year, the uptick in coverage of menopause has been huge. Have you noticed that? Have I? Or maybe it's just because I'm mired in the space, as it were. I, I think I've just, I think I've also become a lot more aware of menopause generally. Uh huh. Yeah. And I'm going to say a lot of that is down to showy ovaries. Oh, thank you. Good. Mm. I'm glad. Right. Mm. So it made you, yeah. So, so yeah. So listening to show, what, what has that done for you about yourself? Well, it's been quite a thing, and I have become a rampant supporter of showy ovaries, and (laughs) I try to sell it to all my menopausal friends. Oh, great. Thank you. And they must listen to it because, yeah, it was a little bit of a road to Damascus experience for me, actually, because I had a very definite way of looking at menopause. Mm-hmm. And what I realized was it wasn't really my own. Right. Yeah. And I think when we were talking before, you mentioned how I had a very kind of spiritual view on it. And I think that had really come about from some spiritually kind of... mm, kind of courses that I'd done. Yes, you went on a course and you'd had written some doodles as having been on this course and you'd enjoyed it. Yes, I had. And often when I do something, I get a little bit converted. Right. Sometimes I can be quite culty. Right. (laughs) And that's a bit bit of a problem with me. Right. You have a little bit of a a cult background, actually. Oh, okay. I do. Yeah. Right. It's not Gloria Vale or anything like that. Not Gloria Vale, but Scientology and like when I was really young. When oh, I wow. Was like a kid. Oh. And yeah, born again Christian and this other weird thing um, right. that probably only three people know about. Um, yeah, so I do have a bit of a culty past. Right, know. okay. And you've left all of that behind? I have fucking left it behind. <laughs> But I do have to watch myself like a hawk. Right. Because I've always been a spiritual person. Yeah. And I I had that seeky thing, that spiritual seeky thing, and I'm always kind of looking for 
higher meaning, which is great. Mm. But I have to be really careful with myself that when I come across things that um, really interest me, that I hold on to my own power right. very tightly right, and that I don't give it away. And fall down some sort of rabbit hole. Fall of... down a fucking rabbit hole because I've fallen down a few. Right. And being pushed, I've got to say, I mean, being involved, you know, doing my first Scientology course at 13. Wow. You know what I mean? I had an aunt who was a, a rabbit Scientologist. And isn't those initial courses finding out about what's wrong with you and what needs fixing? Yeah, they're, they're pretty What wreck. is it called? The, the evaluation, the... Yeah, you do like some kind of... In fact, what I remember mostly, because I went to... She worked in the in New Zealand kind of headquarters in Auckland on Queen Street. This is back in 1979. And so... I would go with her and I'd be there every day. And we used to watch this horrifying short film about people being electric shocked and over and over and over again, you know, kind of, and then they'd be saved by um, Scientology. Scientology. It's called the audit. Is that right? Do you audit? You people get audited as the first thing? They do, which sounds like an economic thing, but it's... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's actually holding on to two tin cans, which are connected to what they call an e meter, and yeah, you basically follow these past lives. Wow! Which, and I'm all about past lives. I I like them. I think they're very interesting and they make sense to me. But you know, whack that's like whack as. Yeah. Wow. My mother used to put me outside when I was about five when the Scientology auditor came around and closed all the curtains to be audited and I would, you know, be wondering <laughs> what was going on in there. I know maybe that's some sort of wanting to belong to that too. I'm being excluded from that. Now I want to be in that. Yeah, and I was brought up on one hand, you know, my Samoan Christian father and my Scientologist, astrologist mother. Wow. But not like... Fully cray cray like her sister right. in Auckland, where you know where I I did all the courses when I was a nothing more than a babe, really. Wow, yeah, really, it's such an impressionable mm. age. They've taken over Whitecliffe Art College now, mm-hmm. Scientology, which is such a nice building, and it makes me sad. Yeah, wow, and because I'm so deeply atheist, I believe in nothing, and so Ooh. to me that is. I mean, I had a Catholic upbringing, ish, not very devout Catholic. Like we didn't have to go to church, which was deeply pleasing to me. But yeah, to have both of those different sides of, and it is true, it, it does seem to be about seeking meaning, like why are we here, et cetera. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't yeah. care about that. It's quite interesting. I don't care. I'm like, we're yeah. here, so let's just do stuff. But that's me personally. But I know a lot mm. of people do need to know why we're here, and that does seem to naturally lead down those sorts of paths. Yeah, and I mean, I love my spirituality. Yep. But I have to be careful with it. Yeah. You know, that I don't fucking hand it away to some weirdo, yeah. you know, <laughs> or even a really good person yeah. who has, you know, who is involved with something really, really good. I have to be careful about that I just don't hand it away to anybody. Yeah, wow, look at that. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you were looking at spirituality side of menopause but then realised maybe there was more to it. Yeah, and I still think that there is a spiritual aspect to it, but I realised later on, after listening listening to Showy Ovaries and listening to all those experiences of all those women and thinking, hang on a minute, you know, and maybe HRT would be a really good idea for me mm. because the huge spike in my epilepsy coincides with menopause for yep. me. Yeah, because you were you were resistant to that idea. I listened to it just yeah, before. Was yeah, I? you were. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't surprise me. And then when I asked myself, "Why do I think those things?" I realized they're not even really my own thoughts. Right. They're not really. Right. I'm so not you. Sure. I'm right. Not sure what they are, you know, and uh, with listening to all of those women, made me ask myself, "Well, what do I really think of menopause?" Me. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and and what I did you come I don't to? know. Right. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I, and it was that thing, listening to 
different women talking about HRT in particular, Mm. which made me draw the line between six years ago when my epilepsy became uncontrollable by drugs. And I thought, well, that was when menopause really kicked off for me. Maybe there's a, a thing. Mm. You know, um, and in a very unculty way, right? I decided to go off and see an endocrinologist who specialises in menopause. Fabulous in Christchurch. In Christchurch, she's a fabulous woman, Anna Fenton. Oh, Anna Fenton. Yes. yes, I've been trying to yeah. talk to Anna Fenton. We haven't managed to have a an interview yet, but yeah, yeah. great. Yeah, so I made an appointment and went to see her, and have gone on. HRT. And how long ago was that? Uh, must be about not six months. It wouldn't be quite that long. Right. But have yeah. you noticed a difference? I have. Not in the epilepsy, unfortunately. Right. That seems to be, you know. Mm, that, that must have been frustrating for you. Yeah, well, just, you know, like I've tried a lot of things from smoking a lot of marijuana to yeah, lots of things. You tried keto, that, that didn't seem to work so well. Yeah, moldy, mm, midi, midi, um, all kinds of stuff. You know, because when the when when everything that Western medicine has stops working, when they wash their hands of you and say, "Well, that's it, we've got nothing else," mm. then you know you try whatever else that you can. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Um. And there was a vague option of surgery, but you didn't seem into that. Is that still well, not? Well, they would have offered it to me anyway. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because of the type of epilepsy that you have. Yeah. And I honestly went as far as I could. Right. And they did wash their hands of me. Wow. You know, right. after 25 years in the um, neurology system, they said, well, we've, that's it. We've done everything. Which basically means they've tried every drug they've got. Yeah, right. So they, you know, it's not a, a surgery thing for me. Um, it's not something that is even an option. Yeah, and they washed their hands of me and cast me into outer darkness, hmm. which is when I tried, started trying everything else. You yeah, know? yeah, right. Okay. But yeah, lis- listening to that, listening to women talk about HRT made me think, okay, I've got to give this a go. And has it worked for menopause symptoms? Yes. Ray. Hot flushes have disappeared completely. Amazing. Have my libido back. Woohoo! Which is really great because it had checked out and left the building. Yeah, you were talking about um, that you were in the market, in the market, and you felt that you were out of the market, which there was basically the singles market. And how do you yeah. feel about that now? I'm back on the market again. <laughs> You're open for business. <laughs> yeah, open for, <laughs> open for business. But losing my libido like that, you know, that, that really took me out because, you know, it's kind of one of the engines mm-hmm. that that keeps the market open. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And does it do, does it have anything to do with your creativity? Because you've got quite saucy material. Um, I don't know. I can't remember. Right. But yeah, I felt I felt quite deadened for a while. Right. There. Yeah, well. Yeah. So that's great that's come back. And what about brain fog and stuff? But that's a bit difficult, I guess, with the epilepsy because they Yeah, no, it hasn't it hasn't made a difference to that. I still have quite crazy uh, memory blanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a, yeah, that's a, um, that's just a thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And, the, and that is like, as I, I was sitting in this in the previous podcast and just, I've only had a few big ones, but yeah, my brain was really severely whacked around there for a while. So mm. I, I, I understand what that's like too. And it just, it, it's like a struggle sort of wading through your brain basically. Yeah. It's a, like tomorrow will be three weeks without a seizure, which is incredible for me. Great. Because, yeah, and that is the longest period of time I've had for, God, I can't remember. So. Great. Yeah. Great. And, and, and it'd be cool. interesting if it is linked to menopause, then, you know, hopefully once you're through the transition completely, it will go away. But then who knows? And, and, and how I do you think that you are postmenopausal now? Like, have you you haven't had a period? 
for well over a year. For about, mm, well, I don't know if you count the one that I had when my daughter had her first period. Yeah, you talked about that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I probably, uh, I don't know, two or three years. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. But then still getting the hot flushes and that sort of so thing. So what do you call that? Am, am I You're like postmenopausal? Postmenopausal, all right. I mm. don't really know what all the words mean, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really yeah. matter. It's only a title. Yeah. Do you feel any liberation from not having periods? Yeah, it's good. Great. It's good. I like it. Yeah, so that's a new yeah. question that I've started asking of recent times is what are the benefits that you have found from menopause? Way less messy. Yeah, great. Mm. Good, good. Um, Any other aspects? I think my skin is nicer. Right, good. I don't know if that's menopause, but it just seems to be. I mean, that could be HRT as well. I don't know. Sending yeah, some I've just noticed recently. that recently. It just seems right. to be kind of smoother and just kind of looks nicer. And do you take the eutrogestin? Yes. Great. And so that's just yeah. become much more affordable as well. Yes. Mm, yeah. Which is great. So that's a very positive move from Pharmac to fund that. Yes. Yeah. So I have the patch. Yep. Which is called Estradot. Yes, Estradot. And the eutrogestin thing. And I'm still kind of... Still kind of experimenting with the amount, so I've gone up kind of 25, 50, 75, which is where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if the nausea and dizziness that I've had just lately might be to do with that. The thing is, I take so many drugs. Right, okay. That it's really hard to know. Mm. But last night, I dreamt I was on a cruise ship and somebody and my someone burnt down a room there was something very nefarious going down set a fire in a room and burnt everything in there and my drugs were in there and we were on the way to a cruise and we weren't coming back for right a, like a long time right I opened the door and I looked into the burning room and I could see some things weren't burnt and I said to the guy who I knew had who had set the fire, maybe I'll just go in there and look for my drugs. Maybe they'll still be unharmed. And then I saw the look on his face and I thought, if I do that, I think he might do me some harm. Wow. So I said, oh, no, I won't. Right. And then thought, oh, my God, I've got to go on this months-long cruise without my drugs. And is that, I don't know, what, and what do you think that says, that you don't want to take them anymore, you want to set fire to them, you, you're you paranoid of not being with them? Yeah, I was really scared about be, not being with them, but I was more scared that he would do me some harm. Right. Because, you know, it was a bit of a cloak and dagger thing. He was obviously trying to destroy some kind of evidence in that room and my drugs just happened to be there. Right. I had yeah. a dream last night where I was trying to get a show ready and I couldn't remember all the lines. But you like it's funny oh, yeah. for you say that your brain that you're not remembering things, but that's a lot of detail for a dream. I, thought, I tell you, the way I dream is extraordinary. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, very vivid, obviously, that you can remember words and things. I find it quite hard to do that. And I and sometimes I feel like, God, that dream must have taken hours. The so, the detail of like the the journey. You go on like a hero's journey through your dream and then yes. wake up and go on, God, how long was that? dream going for but they often happen in you know in actual time very small amount of time right there's, mm. I'm sure there's podcasts dedicated to interpreting I'm dreams. I'm sure there are. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yes, because I've sort of, I, I've got, I take my Lamotrigine for epilepsy and I was taking amitriptyline for the vulvodynia pain, which you've probably heard about if you've been listening to a few podcasts. No, what is that? It is. Is the word vulva at the beginning? Yes, it's a burning vulva, oh. which is bad. Because I thought having done this, this is the way that this, podcast influenced me I was like oh it must be the oh I don't even know how they it's the genitourinary symptom of menopause which is like vaginal atrophy and stuff so and then I went off and got my estrogen cream and it made no difference and then it, yeah and then it's kind of, it's probably not menopause at all but it could be some tension in my vaginal wall there mm. you go that I'm tensing my vagina too much so I've gotten this thing called a thera wand that you push onto the walls of your vagina. It looks like a crank so you can get some good, you know, 
T- uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Fulcrum action uh, wow. with, some, with some physics um, rather than trying to reach in and get it. And and it does feel like today and yesterday is feeling quite a bit better. And this has been going since December. So so when I was talking to you, I was still feeling very relaxed in my vowel area. But, yeah, since then that's been something with me. But I've been taking amitriptyline for that, but I'm sort of weaning myself back off that because that gave me – a dry mouth and and I thought that was affecting my singing voice. Mm. Anyway, but yeah, so we are on lots of meds and I I nearly did run out of one. Why? Well, it's right for the first time in my life, and I've been taking epilepsy meds since I was sixteen. I forgot to take some with me, and then that was like fuck. You know, <laughs> so yeah. thankfully yeah, yeah. could get it from it was in New Zealand. I could get it from a pharmacist in New Zealand. But yeah, there's a lot of things to take, so you're not quite sure what's causing what. Basically, no, it's. That's the thing. I was trying to figure that out just just before I came on this podcast, and who knows what is causing what. Yeah, yeah. And what what sort of things did Anna say around the epilepsy? She said that she's had some success with women with epilepsy and HRT. Right. Um, Yeah. So, of course, I get highly excited about that. Of course. Um, And, I mean, you know, it's awesome for women who do have that. The fact that I have, you know, that I've gone three weeks without without a seizure is Mm. really extraordinary. Mm. But who knows really what that is? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, I think it can take numerous months. I'm not sure about six. I think most people say about three months, isn't it, to get sort of – with HRT, even though I don't know, I haven't done it. Yeah, I don't know either. Right. I don't know. And the thing is, because my memory is so, has a whole thing of its own, mm. I don't always remember shit. Right, okay. Okay, well, mm. let's just decide this is it. This is it. And this is going to make a big difference. When did you go up to 75? Not long ago. Right. I think probably only about mm, a week or two ago. Right, Okay. Yeah. So we'll see what happens from here. Mm. That's exciting. But, you know, again, you don't want to get your hopes up, do you, just in, in case? Yeah. But yeah. it must be so hard not to because this has been going on for six years now, hey? Yeah. That's, I mean, I've had epilepsy since I was 27 but and I'm 56 now, but it would be a few a year. Mm. And mm. now, you know, we're up to, mm. yeah. And how was you were talking about your daughter going through puberty and that was a fun time. So is that oh, it's awful? Right, still it is just unrelentlessly awful. Oh God! Right. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. is that is she? Is she not got much empathy? Is it? Is <laughs> right. <laughs> that says it all. That's yeah. not right. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yes. Right. I'm also on crutches at the moment. Um, oh. I hurt my knee doing yoga, but. See, I don't like yoga. That reinforces my decisions. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know. My un- Under that is a whole lot of osteoarthritis. Um, right. As in my hip. Right. So, and I'm pretty sure that, I think it's genetic, but I, I think because I remember my grandmother and walking the way I do Mm -hmm. and, you know, having to do, because she has to sit on the floor because she's a, you know, old school Samoan, having to do a full downward dog to get off the floor. Right. Which is a situation that I'm in now too. Right, right. And also um, HRT is good for bone density. So hopefully that might help in that respect as well. I'm not quite sure what's osteo. I'm totally ready for surgery. You know, I've decided, right, that's it. I'm hip replacement. Hip and half knee, apparently. Wowzers. And so have you got medical insurance or are you in the system? I don't have medical insurance and I've decided that I'm not willing to wait any longer. Are you going to pay? I'm on, you know, the waiting list. So I'm just going to go private and have great. it done. Yeah. It's great that you can do that. That's I think. It is great I can do that, yep. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah, we ju- I just got medical insurance like a few months ago, mm. having never had it as an adult, just for exactly that sort of thing. But yeah. I was like, I've got one that's 160 a month for both of us. Wow. And I wanted one that was the lowest, you know, that it was basically to stop me being bankrupted if something big happens. But like yeah. we pay for the doctor, pay for specialists, pay for tests, etc. But then just yeah. have that backstop. But that's great. That should be life changing. 
It will be, oh. you know, and I've, it's only been really recently that I've decided that's it. I'm spending every cent I have and it is every cent to get, get your life back. To I get mean, my life back. Yeah. I'm over it. Over, yeah. you know, over, over it. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know what effect I can have on my brain. Mm. None that I can think of at the moment. Mm. Um, but I can do something about my, I have in my knee. Yeah. 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 And have you noticed any difference? Like, were you having pain in your joints or anything like that? You know, Apart from I these think it probably dates back to having my baby. Okay. And I had her when I was 41. And right. I think she basically just sucked all the goodness out of my bones, <laughs> basically, oh, out of my life. <laughs> no, I hope she never listens to this. <laughs> but I don't think this is her sort of bag, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. And and I did have that pain in my hip from then. Mm. Yeah, I remember just feeling like my whole body was dislocated when I was pregnant. Yes, I've got another um, friend that was like that. She had to wear like a brace around her pelvis to keep it from sort of spreading mm, out and keeping yeah. going. Yeah, because your bones yeah. get a bit more malleable so they can squeeze them out. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah, it's been in the past year or two that it's kicked up. Right. You know, so it's okay. constant pain. Yeah, you know, right. Now. And now I have to be on crutches, you know. It's yeah, that's crazy, yeah. Mental. yeah. So when is the timeline for that? I'm seeing a specialist uh, next month. Right. And who is apparently very, very good but very rude, as specialists I want to be, male specialists I want to be. Yeah, and orthopedic um, surgeons are like the biggest, apparently. Rankers, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just I saw one an orthopedic surgeon about my hip about a month ago, and he was so awful. Wow, so awful! I went away and wrote a poem called "Big Fat Brown Bitch." Wow, because that's what he made you feel like. Yeah, he was just just dreadful. So, um. Yeah, my, my friend who has had this other surgeon who I will probably have for my, my hip has warned me. She said he's very good as a surgeon, but he's pretty appalling as a human being. Oh, my God. That's, and that's so shit that we are forced to interact with these people in this mm -hmm. medical world. Like I had this really dismissive gynecologist in Waitakere Hospital when I was trying to figure out what's going on with my burning flaps basically mm. uh and he was just like oh my god you know he was so dismissive he's like oh you've been looking at dr google and it's like actually i've been kind of mired in all of this so i'm not some idiot but yes so that that the arrogance is something that we just have to endure is very frustrating because it does you know and i'm fucking stroppy but i came out of that and i'd forgotten to say a couple of things because i was so fucked off with him and that's the thing it can throw you off yeah yeah i mean Sometimes this this kind of I mean I'm used to rich old white men, you know, yeah, behaving badly. But this just took my breath away. Right, you know, this was next level. Well, good luck with the one that you forge ahead with, and that hopefully that's not too far away. Then, hey, yeah. As soon as I get to see him, then I think we'll get things underway. Oh, my God, that's so exciting. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes, and hopefully the HRT will help with, like, you know, future going on with bones and joints and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Because it's supposed yeah. to. So what's your trajectory with HRT, do you think? Um, I don't know. Mm. I think we'll just take it a bit at a time. It's, it's amazing yeah. how long everything takes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like just figuring out the dosages and for me it was trying to figure out what's the best thing and it seems that, well, for me to hear the terms like pelvic floor physio, I was like, what the fuck is that? And it's exactly what it sounds like and it's fucking weird, you know, and yeah. at first I was a bit confronted. I was like, I don't want to do that. What's No, no, thank you. But then she was great. She was really lovely. She was lovely and just mm. made you go, okay, here we I thought she was going to give me some stretches, but she did yeah. that with her fingers from the inside. So Wow. Yeah. Awesome. I have a very handsome physiotherapist. It might be a different kind of I think deal. I'd find that I'd, I'd prefer a lady doing yes. that. I think a handsome yes. physio, he'd be like, why is it so slippery in here now? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, that would be because I'm on HRT. Yes, that's right. That's right. Oh, my God. Right, okay. So I have some other questions from listening to your – oh, right now – one thing I thought was very lovely was that you kept saying that you had no shame through it all and stuff like that, which I think is great. And have you, is that still the case about menopause and things? Yes. Yeah, that's so great. I really, really refuse to be ashamed by yep. it. Great. And I'll talk in quite a loud voice in public to other women. Fantastic. About it. Great. You know, sometimes, yeah, sometimes I can feel the atmosphere kind of change a bit. But women are really pretty fascinated and maybe slightly, quietly desperate. Right. To hear and about I, it. You know, yeah, I've recommended your podcast to a lot of women, you know. And, um, yeah, a lot of women don't have a lot of knowledge around menopause. Yeah. And I think that's a too is a lot of people have such specific, um, even if they're postmenopausal, they've had such a specific journey themselves. They don't know about all this other stuff because mm. they weren't told and then they didn't need to learn about it when they were having it. So, yeah, just want to get all those those different symptoms out there and yeah to talk about it though it is so, it being at this age as 48 and it's just this constant is that is that it oh I don't know like with this nerve like I've actually got nerve sort of tingling all down my legs as well mm-hmm. and then sometimes one one bottom of my foot feels like a bit it's like got glad wrap on it and that's can be a symptom and it's pins and needles mm-hmm. in my hands when I'm waking up so I'm like is that because of laying on it funny or is that a menopause thing because it is also a symptom so it's just sometimes Listen. knowing a lot, yeah, yeah. That's what Louisa yeah. Wall had really bad pins and needles when she was waking up, and that's why she one of the reasons she went on HRT. Mm. So I yes. think when you've got a number of physical issues as well, yeah, you know, it's very hard for me anyway to know what is what, what, yep. but what belongs to the epilepsy, what belongs to the menopause, what belongs to you know, some other things I have going on as well, you know, can yep. get very confusing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got five conditions now, you know, so I was saying mm. I start to sound like a Latin textbook when you start to describe all the things that are going on with me. And and it's been a real eye-opener into, because, you know, when you're younger, you think you have something wrong with you, go to the doctor and it gets fixed. Mm. And then you get a bit older and go, no, that's not necessarily the mm-hmm. case at all. That they just go, oh, we don't know. Let, oh, let's try that. And that, that so often they're floundering around in the dark too. Yeah. And and that so many of them are trying so hard to help you. Like my doctor is great. And then you have other people that just are dickheads. Um, yeah. Mm. And I mean, I guess because I've been in the medical system and in a number of systems within systems mm. for quite a long time now, you know, I realise that doctors and specialists often don't know that much. Yeah. You know, they, they're they often, you know, I call neurologists the GPs of the brain. Right, you know, right. And I think, yeah, I, I think that the knowledge of the, hu- the knowledge of the human body is really limited. Right. You know. Right. They know, okay. they know some of what they know and there's a whole lot that they don't, you know. And the brain is a is a flippin' mystery. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. So much of it, yeah, that we don't know about. Did you listen to the epilepsy? You must have listened to the purple day. I would have. Yeah, but because of my brain, I, I don't can't quite remember. remember. Right. Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's two two epileptic friends who are now menopausal. One taking HRT, one not, because mm. she thinks it will make her menopause worse. Mm. So she's um using all sorts of neck fans and various things and stuff right. to dispel the the hot flushes, whereas the other lady's taking HIT and it's working for her. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Because that's what I mean, and that gives me pause, hoping that I can take HIT because sometimes it's difficult to do that. Yeah. Like if, if I yeah, need yeah. to. And it's and the other question is when when do you re- think that you've tipped over to the point that HIT will help now? Like you say, oh, I can put up with this for this long. Oh, I can put up with that. But then suddenly it's like, why should I? So was, yeah. what was holding you back from HRT, do you think? Mm, I think I had really bad information or no information. And, and maybe I, that whole yeah. WHI study about cancer and stuff got into your head, do you think? No, not okay. really. Right. I did a bit of reading about that, you know, mm. and realised realized how much bullshit that that was. Yeah. But 
I think it comes down to that kind of culty thing about not wanting to interfere with, you know, the body's natural blah, blah, which yes. is so much fucking bullshit, you know. Right. Yeah, and there is a lot of that. There's, you know, it's not a condition, it's not a disease, you don't need to. But it's like, well, you know, it is something that happens to the human body and we have drugs to help with that like we do with lots of other things. Yeah. So let's Which try was it. insane because I was, I'm was i on the hugest amount of anti-epileptic And you drugs. still are? Massive, massive right, okay. amounts of, I think I take three anti-epileptics. Wow. Which are, a big amounts you know? yeah right right but i've tried i've tried coming off some of them with with bad results right you know? right okay yeah. yeah and that's what i said last time too is that life with epilepsy is basically life experimenting with drugs mm-hmm. you to get it under control that's what like a friend of mine did a television show she had an epilepsy segment she said oh we don't really want to talk about the medications i'm like well that's that's what it, that's what yeah. epilepsy is. Yeah, and that's kind of all they have to offer most epileptics. Yeah, but and the keto thing can work indeed for some people and has done, but mm. not for you, sadly. I know, and it's so because every time you try something and it's like, oh, please God, let the oh, fuck. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that's. I mean, I felt that a little bit on a much smaller scale, but with my vulva. Um, my yeah. vulva being much smaller than your massive brain. Uh, but yeah, just like every time you try a new unguent or unguent and something, you just go, oh, oh well, never mind. But yeah, so that's what I'm, I'm, I'm wanding myself every morning <laughs> and then <laughs> in fact, <laughs> sorry, a furious wanding before I start oh, my day. It's like a wee fairy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, there we go. Oh, that's, I like mm. that. I've got a, a fairy. A fairy with a magic wand. Fairy wand. A fairy wand. It's my little fairy oyster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was there any other conclusions you feel that you've drawn from all of this or observations or anything? Well, I mean, and I think I said this before, I think it was really important for me to listen to all those women talk about their experiences. Great. And go, and go, hang on a minute, why do I believe what I believe? Yeah, right. My cultimeter. Um, and even though I had maybe a few weird kind of culty reasons. Right. Um, I think that a lot of women have wrong information, no information, a lot of fear around it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's spoken so little of mm-hmm. in the public sphere. Yeah, the, the more information via other women's experience that we can get the better great because just straight information is is not always helpful yeah right it's quite to me it's quite often overwhelming but in the context of other women's experience right that's really valuable that's so gratifying to me because that is my whole mo with this podcast Mm. you know i've had i've had the occasional menopause expert which I have enjoyed but my main focus is to being have women that have experienced it so they can tell yeah. us their stories yeah, yeah absolutely yeah cool you're doing a good thing Penny Ashton oh, thanks Tosiata Avia I appreciate that it makes me especially because it was me desperately in lockdown going what the fuck am I going to do mm-hmm. and it's amazing where it's taken me in a year like I'm going to Nelson to do showy over his live this coming oh, weekend I love, it. I love it yeah I did one in Wellington I was thinking about maybe trying to do something in Christchurch I think I might going to take a break actually maybe at the end of this month because I've done one a week since February so that's oh, quite yes. a lot. Come to yes. Christchurch with your ovaries. I'm yes. very, uh, very excited. I should try and pitch it to the Word Festival as well, something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, I'm glad that my lockdown um, depression uh, pivot has helped you. It I has. fucking love that. It really, really has. Right. Yeah. That makes me feel so great. Yay. And be if anybody else has had that, then do get in touch. I would be very curious to know about it. And mm. maybe I'll, I'll we'll touch in again in a year's time and see what's happened with the HRT journey from there. Yes, yes. And let's hope I haven't joined another cult. <laughs> if you ever need somebody to be your touchstone, <laughs> just flick me a message and go, what do you think this sounds like? And then I will happily bring all of my massive pessimism <laughs> to bear. Yes, you could just send out a deprogrammer or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll say let go of the tin cans. Emily, I need to be kidnapped from 
Blah, blah. Just, tin can thing is like what it's like you're just yeah. speaking to one end and i'll hear you at the other end <laughs> it's <just> really <laughs> wacky it, it really is really like that south park episode about scientology was very eye-opening it was like oh my god this is oh, this is crazy it. yeah yeah okay well thank you so much for from my third guest to i think i've done like 55 podcasts now awesome. and it's nearly at fourteen thousand downloads so from when we st- did so one much. i hadn't had a single one until now so thank you for coming along on the journey and listening and being a marvelous guest thank you for being a marvelous ambassador dare i say yes what is the word i'm looking for spokesperson activist Activist. Oh, I like it. Yes. yes. Menopause activist. There we go. Oh, cult it. leader. Cult leader. There we go. Cult leader. <laughs> yes. The cult of menopause. Right. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. I'll see you sometime. I will. Thanks, Penny. So that was yet again the very marvellous Tusiata Avia, who I forgot to ask for a fun fact outrageously. It's like I haven't done a podcast before. So I will reiterate that her book, as a fun fact, The Savage Colonizer won the Ockham Book Award for Poetry in 2021, and you should buy it right now. She's also such a great performer. I was just watching a speech that she delivered when she won that award, including reading some of her poetry from The Savage Colonizer, and it's just entertaining so please do absolutely go look her up by her book and she's so great and i have all of my appendages crossed for her that the upped dose of hrt will calm that prodigious brain of hers to a point where the only flashes that fly across her synapse are for sparks of inspiration for more award-winning literature fingers crossed Thanks for tuning in to my World Menopause Day special. The fact this podcast arrives every Monday is purely down to the fact it was on a Monday last year. I'm very much looking forward to my weekend joint to the Nelson Festival this weekend with Showy Overeys Live to not only hear from Nikki Pizant and Nikki Pellegrino about their books, but also, as Tusiata has pointed out, that she enjoys so much about their own personal journeys navigating this bloody great, yes, bloody great big change. Thanks for listening for a year, and let's make showy ovaries a cult of juicy excellence and awesomeness, and not of the tin pot, tin can bullshit variety. And thanks so much to my patrons, you delightful people. Some have been with me for the full year, and you pay for the hosting of this podcast with your contributions, and you're the best! On that note, till next week, Penny Ashton signing off for 365 days of showy ovaries. Kaki Tay. Kaki Tay.